Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Skyline Classic presented by Innova. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy here at the Silver Fox Course. This is located just three short miles from where they played round number one, which was at the Gray Fox Course. Both courses in the Kenosha County Park System. This one being the more challenging and we're going to look at hole number one, 294 feet. Basically straight ahead, a little bit downhill or considerably downhill, relatively straight shot. We're going to see the drone coverage throughout. Well, it came in in the fall. You see not quite as full and thick as we're playing this round in the spring of 2021. And one of our four co-leaders, CJ King on the tee. CJ King hails out of Kakana, Wisconsin. And, well, we'll say the certainly the closest to the course out of our competitors. This is Jeff Matthews, just over the Illinois-Wisconsin border in Antioch, Illinois. Lefty Tanner Helm hails out of Waukesha, Wisconsin. And sets up well with the tee shot here on one. And Andrew Brown, I've got him back on coverage from quite a few years ago. You see he has an ultimate background, hails out of Madison, Wisconsin. Andrew, however, performed quite well at the <laughs> Amateur Doubles World Championships that took place down on, down on John Houck's property or one of John Houck's designs at that event. I should have left all of the names for you guys to try and pronounce <laughs> from all these Wisconsin cities, Waukesha, Kakana, some of the unique ones that we have. CJ off to the left side, just trying to get out of jail. Here he is to try and save his par. Good power, just not enough. No. Jeff from about Circle's Edge, trying to f find a clear lane here. As I mentioned, this course, about three miles from the previous course, this one playing about 1,000 feet longer, coming in at almost 7,000 feet. And Jeff's off the mark with his birdie luck. And it's just a really cloudy, gray, overcast, rain on, rain off kind of day. And unfortunately, we're going to probably see the weather elements come into play here in the next few holes. You hear some of the wind that's picked up. And a great birdie. Taking the outright lead, Tanner. Fun fact about CJ, many, many years ago, I was teaching a one credit disc golf class, probably about 20 minutes from here, 30 minutes from the, where this course is, and CJ King was one of the students that I had in my intro to disc golf. Clearly, he's gone on to be a solid player, of course. He was a good player coming into the class. I'm not going to say if he got an easy A or not, but he's on the lead card here at a tournament, so... I flunked him. Here we are. <laughs> Andrew's in for birdie. And they're going to take a very short walk up a small hill. Here we are on the top of two, 324 feet. The distance, not really the issue here. I would not go that route and try and go through the Y tree there. But it plays down and to the left. It's really a straight shot that just has a gentle fade all the way to this lower area. Road can come into play with a terrible shot. Again, drone footage, thanks to Boom Disc Golf. He actually was out there in the fall, captured the footage, so it looks a little bit different. Great flight, but 
looks very different from what we saw this course in the second or third week of April. Not quite clean the entire way, but relatively good shot. Should give him an easy up and down, maybe a long look at birdie. The six under that all of our competitors shot in their opening round. I believe was rated around 1017. So they played some pretty good golf during the morning round. Tanner's approach left on the hillside a little bit short. Doesn't hit anything, stays safe for Andrew, no problem. Oh, I didn't realize you went all the way out. Uh, yeah, I would say I'm good with that. Wow, and it looks like the group actually sees that CJ had kicked out of bounds. I guess I'm thinking about the drone fly over how thick and full everything is grown in as opposed to when you see it here during the springtime. Much easier to find the OB. He's actually on the right side. This hole plays down to the left where you see the other cameraman down there. And it essentially is looks like a peninsula almost of sorts with road that completely surrounds it. Usually it's tough to find the road but you get a kick that stays unobstructed and next thing you know, you're out of bounds. So CJ with the very early struggles here on both one and two. Down there. Gotta like the play, put it on its back, try and let it slide down the hill. You're probably wondering about some statistics. Well, thanks to the PDGA, of course, I can give those to you. As Tanner's not going to save his par. Surprisingly, for 324 feet, this averaged 0.44 above par. Played as the fourth most difficult hole on the course. So downhill to the left, 324 feet. Still averaged as the fourth most difficult hole on the course. Just three birdies. You see some significant scoring separation right off the bat. CJ, who came in as one of the four guys tied at six, falls all the way back to three. Jeff remains at six. Tanner now goes back to six, and Andrew at seven. We head over to hole three, 330 feet. Plays straight ahead, and then it has a late fade here off to the left. Somewhat difficult to access all the way over to this left side pin. I feel like a lot of players get too aggressive, try and throw it either too hard and it goes too straight, or if you cut off the corner early and you don't get around it, you're in a lot of trouble. Well, clarification on the tee pad, who's got the honors? Of course, you go by who had the best score on the previous hole. If it's tied, you go to the previous hole of that and so on and so forth.
and we're hearing our very first raindrops as that's pushed too straight. Not enough finish to it. Full three averaged 0.12 above par. So 3.12 for the par four. Nice low skipper. And you don't know just how good it is until he gets up there, but he's certainly going to love that shot. And after two left-handed backhand drives, we see the righty roller by Tanner, and with that little kick out, that's going to be in perfectly fine position to give it either a long bid or at least just lay up for the three. Skip and a roll, no problem there for CJ. As I said, with the little skip out that Tanner got at the last second, keeping him on the edge at least gives him an aggressive line. Should be able to settle for a par from there. Andrew reaches out. Should be a tap in par for him as well. Here's CJ for a birdie look. Certainly a huge bounce back for CJ King after the bogey on one, the double on two. Hopefully he can right the ship, taking the birdie. Jeff would like to get on the board. A little too much. This course, along with the Gray Fox course and the Red Fox course, which is a really short nine-hole beginner course over at the other park, all free to play. We had a little donation station set up, but all free to play. Generally, the baskets are in year-round, and often you'll see Skyline Classic taking place in April or sometime in the spring. And then two days after Thanksgiving, we have the cold turkey over at the Gray Fox course. We move over to hole four, a par three at 393 feet. And this tunnel just gets tighter and tighter and tighter and eventually you arrive to the protected green has a little bit of a right or a correction left to right bend to it you can also see dealing with the mud everything else from our springtime play can work with the footing and that's a can be quite the punishing kick off to that right side maybe a little less punishing here in the spring as opposed to when you see the drone fly over Tight on the right side. This certainly is going to play as one of the more difficult par threes on the course. In fact, the sixth most difficult. Overall, the whole average is 0.4 above par. Certainly a premium or a bonus birdie if you get up there for it. And you can be in a lot of trouble off on that left or right side. Either... Either side off the fairway, not good. And it really sets up well for the lefty. Okay, not bad. CJ 
calling it that he's just trying to get out to the fairway. And that should work. So you see the conditions out here. I guess my question for you, I need you to leave it in the comments. We've got giveaways, got primarily double G jerky, but I've got this and other options I'm working on my website. Do you enjoy springtime golf? It feels like a lot of people go out and they're really amped up. Maybe they've been cooped up in the winter, depending on where you live. Is springtime golf something that you look forward to? That's what I want to know. And if not, what's your favorite season to be playing in? Here we see some of the mud. Can be cold temperatures. Some people would prefer that over 100 degree weather. Whatever the case might be, tell me in the comments what your favorite season is for playing disc golf. Well, we're not seeing a whole lot of access to the basket here for birdie. And that will leave CJ still without a, a par on the round. See a sweatshirt, we got a raincoat, long sleeves. All part of this springtime golf. All right, doing the work for me. CJ says <laughs> he bogeys, everybody else takes the three. Hole five, 417 feet, comes to this pinch point where you're trying to navigate. You really have to go through this tunnel, and then it takes just a gentle bend up to the left-hand side. 417 plays uphill. I'd give it at least a good 430, maybe even 440 effectively. Somebody could argue 450. I, I guess I wouldn't argue with them. Andrew's one down on the round. Tanner's even along with Jeff. And CJ is three over. This, along with the other course that I've referenced, the Gray Fox course, uh, designed by myself, along with good friend Tom Jenkins, also some influence by John Turlap. One of the nicest pieces of property I've ever had the chance to work on a course design for. And the Parks Department, gentleman by the name of Nick, just out of this world phenomenal. Hopefully that stays out and on the edge, so not too punishing. Let's see if CJ can again bounce back, get something going. Oh, no. A slip? That wasn't bad at all. Yeah, he did lose power, but at, he'll have a long look, and believe it or not, that looks like the best drive in the group. I know I've been talking about the difficulty of the holes, but this does come in as the single most difficult hole relative to, to par. Averaged 3.67. Tanner with all the tricks. Again, going to the righty shot, the righty overhand. Not quite clean. 
just really re- unique knowing that he also throws lefty backhands. Jeff was trying to pick up the first birdie on this hole for the day. CJ in position to get the lone birdie of the entire day in the entire field. And unfortunately not going to happen. Andrew, who's had a clean round, again, birdie on hole one, pars ever since. And looking, unfortunately for him, to fall back to even on the round. So when it was all said and done, most difficult hole relative to par, averaged .67. And zero birdies. So maybe there's a course design flaw or just conditions, a little bit of both. 417, we know our most elite level players are probably giving themselves more looks at it. Certainly have a, we'll say, regional based field here. But nonetheless, when it was all said and done, a par was picking up strokes on most people that day big shout out to our friends over at midi disc golf and here we are hole six you saw them standing on the tee for this 501 feet slightly uphill the entire way this fairway didn't used to look so beautiful they continued to clean it out throughout the years and this slight gradual incline uphill should be a relatively soft par four at 501 feet you have to keep it in the fairway, like so many of the other holes out here. As long as that just drops in the fairway, that's uh, a pretty good spot to be. You bite off three, three and a quarter. Again, it's slightly uphill the whole way. So if you're getting three and a quarter, 350, you're doing, doing most of the work. This will go on to play as the third easiest hole on the course, averaging 3.7 as a par four. back out to the center of the fairway. It was going right in the bushes and then it just never did. He's also climbing uphill the entire way, so maybe a little bit deceptive. The low swing and release by Tanner still keeps him in the middle of the fairway. As this creeps uphill, it also kind of drifts up and to the right. So that's why you're seeing a forehand shot here by CJ, and it actually sets up really well for the lefty second shot as well. I'll say it goes, well, you see it right here, at the 12.30, you know, maybe the 1 o'clock position. So it's not a hard turn to the right. It's kind of a gentle fade off to the right side. Tanner comes into the event with a 9.74 rating. Andrew here, sponsored by Innova. Comes in, I believe, as the highest rated player in the division at 994. If not the highest, one of the highest. Set himself up for birdie. 
As I said, Jeff, some, most local to the area, about 15, 20 minute drive at most, rated 965. Wow. <laughs> and splitting that tree somehow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not sure I believe he meant to do it, but we'll go with that. Yeah, there's a solid putt. And then CJ King, the other remaining guy on the card here, 983 is his rating. So we got a 965, 974, 983, and 994. And while I'm spitting out other facts, big shout out, the cameramen braving the conditions, which still are manageable. We got Dylan, along with Dustin, and Paul, out, all out on the cameras as I'm holding down Tournament Central. Remember, everyone here started at three under, or correction, sorry. Everyone here started at six under par. As I was looking at CJ's score. So CJ now goes to two over for the round. Andrew's looking to go one under for the round. Tanner's even for the round. And Jeff is one under for the round. But that's a star frame nonetheless. Big thanks to our friends over at Swarm Digital Media. They can help you out with your online presence, SEO, website development. A bunch of great guys over there. Make sure you check them out. Here we are on hole seven, 360 feet down and to the right. Doesn't feel like we've had enough of these. This somewhat runs parallel to the previous hole. However, there's a significant buffer of trees there. OB road, left side. Oh, I like this. Oh, and he's gone deep of the pin. And that might be punishing as we're hearing the rain. This is the single most open tee shot that they've had, and it also happens to be when the rain starts up for them during the round. That doesn't get more than 150 feet or so. You'll have work to do. Here's Andrew. Um, that's hooking up. And that's where the road comes in closest, but yeah, you certainly can't throw anything with stability that's gonna push it off to that left side. Especially as the hole fades down into the right the whole way. Wind picking up, rain picking up. Fun factor might be diminishing. The righty forehand off the mark for Tanner. Of course, as with all PDGA rules, you have the option to either throw from where you were previously had thrown from or from where you were last in bounds, unless there's some something special about this particular hole or OB, which there's not. So he takes it from where he was last in bounds, pitches through, and likely as the bogey look. This is Tanner for par. And finally, getting to his second shot is Jeff, who's gone deep of the pin. And off a tree, but next to the basket. So, may not be a birdie here, but it's going to play like one, according to the rest of his card. Hole seven. Fifth most difficult. It's tied with hole two in terms of playing at 
3.44. And only a couple of birdies that were had on this card. Spoiler alert, Barry Schultz's nephews, both of them, Andrew Schultz and Hayden Schultz, both got the birdie. It's a pretty interesting fun fact. <laughs> only two guys to birdie it. Two brothers that are uh, Barry Schultz's nephews. Now we look at hole eight. This is downhill, blind shot playing right to left the whole way. You can't cut the corner off too short. You're going to find yourself in a world of trouble. Certainly doesn't play the 306 feet that it's marked at as it plays downhill. Going with the high spike. And you heard it hitting good wood. <laughs> Of course, big thank you to everyone that you've seen in the drone previews in terms of the names that pop up. Those are some of our biggest supporters and sponsors, volunteers, assistants, sponsors, all of the above. You're also going to see a list of names at the end, which were also all tournament sponsors. So thank you guys so much for all of the support. Playing the high spike as well. And certainly not as loud as the others. <laughs> and even when the players say they all lost it immediately, and that might be for a cameraman to find it, but it looks like we've got it hunted down. And he had gone deep, so he's playing back up to the pin. Also in plenty of trouble, CJ. <laughs> Are you guys sensing a theme here? We've got three flick shots, all obstructed. And then here we've got Andrew's putt. Just a link of chain, certainly not enough. And has anyone changed their mind about springtime golf as we're seeing the jackets, hearing the rain? This hole averaged 3.12. Couple of birdies in the open division. It's, I guess, specifically three, as in a few. Jeff still has the lead by one. Chase Card's trying to do some work. Big shout out to our friends at Pastry Dyes. We're heading over hole nine, a par four, 480 feet that bends from left to right, playing down the corridor. It gets even skinnier as you go through the middle section and then it opens back up. Certainly the drone shot not taken during the day of the tournament. As you see the beautiful sunshine. Clearly distance, not the challenge here. So much more of the actual, actual accuracy required. And Jeff pulls it in right, kicks hard to that left side. 
this hole averaged 4.02, so almost exactly right on par. Keeping it tight to the right side, that should set him up for a look on the second shot. I'd take that boring shot all day. Favorable to stay on the edge at least. That kicks in another five or eight or 10 feet. And I think he's really hating life. Turns it over too much, he says, but still in the fairway. Has a look to get up and down for par. Again, just 480 feet. Jeff with the disciplined, smart play. Let's see if he can make it pay off, get up and down. And that's going to be short, but still a putt. Looking middle to deep section of circle two. Andy from the right side. And not able to keep it clean. And what a punishing kick. The guys discussing the skill level versus luck factor. And CJ could have done without that extra three feet of skip just to make the putt that much more challenging. And Andrew up on that right side just trying to fight out. Again, super punishing kick. Hmm, looks like Jeff was even deeper than I realized. He's going to have the pitch out. Keeping the disc dry, your hands dry. Picking up the birdie. No problem for Tanner. Getting back to par through the front nine. CJ with his struggles here. He's four over here on the front. Got some work to do if he wants to get back into contention here for the lead. Great balance, great control. Working hard for the par. <laughs> Jeff started at six under, that's where he is now. Tanner, same, started at six. Andrew started at six, he falls back to five. We got a great looking battle. Hope you guys don't go anywhere. Thank you to all the Patreon subscribers and supporters. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the back nine. This is your 2021 Skyline Classic presented by Innova Champion Discs. I'm the Disc Golf Guy. We'll see you on the back.